Punk Revolution now. Today I'm taking on the impossible task of reviewing the newest Swans album, Leaving Meaning. If I were to make a list of the greatest rock bands of all time, I would certainly put Swans very high up there. Their discography is fucking insane. They've got albums going back all the way to the early 80s, so they've been releasing albums for decades, and they've released a ton of them, and they are challenging, inaccessible, a lot of times pretty abrasive, pretty fucking just dense, creative, experimental, beautiful, powerful records. This is in a very challenging discography, but a very essential one, one of the greatest greatest experimental rock bands of all time without a doubt. I am a huge Swans fan, I have been listening to them since before they released The Seer, so it's been a while, and I know their discography very, very well, I feel like I am I'm pretty well equipped to take this review on, but I'm gonna fucking do it, let's fucking go, let's start by taking a look at their album artwork. Okay, so we got a yellow artsy fartsy album cover here. Um, this is very typical of Swans, very beautiful cover, of course. And uh, you know, I I, I I like this cover. What 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 really first stood out to me about this cover is that bright, vivid yellow color, and how much it reminds me of the sun, which is. Probably not very surprising given that one of the highlight tracks off this album is titled Sunfucker. Very typical of swans to reference the sun. They've been referencing the sun going all the way back to the 80s. They love to use those bold words. Sun. Fuck. Money. Power. God. They love that shit and they're continuing it right here in their newest album. Love the cohesiveness. Very powerful stuff. And, um, you know, if we, if we actually, like, dive into this album musically, what are we going to get? I would say, out of all the albums they've released since 2010, we're talking The Seer, we're talking To Be Kind, and we're talking The Glowing Man, that trilogy of three albums that are each two hours long of dense post-rock. This album, Leaving Meaning, more than any of those three other albums, really manages to tie the Swans discography together into one album. We're gonna get elements of the, those three albums that I just listed, the trilogy, that post-2010s trilogy, we're gonna get elements of that dense post-rock and that heavy, groovy post-rock in this album. But we're also gonna get elements of going back to Soundtrack for the Blind, going back to the 90s, we're gonna get elements of that gorgeous, kind of eerie post-rock, lots of post-rock in this album. We're also gonna get elements of a little bit of that gothic element, just, just a tinge. Swans really flirted a lot with gothic elements in their album, White Light from the Mouth of Infinity, and we're gonna get a little bit of that goth coming right back into this album. And we're also gonna get the folky elements of Angels of Light, which is a, which is a side project of the front man of Swans, Michael Jira, which is... We're just getting all these different elements. Fucking folk, we're gonna get the post-rock, we're gonna get the fucking goth, we're gonna get all that, we're gonna cram it into a completely different creation from Swans. This album, Leaving Meaning, is, although it takes and borrows all these different elements, it really is Swans, in my opinion, most ambitious work into diving into gorgeousness and beauty. This is a gorgeous fucking album. We have not heard Swans make music this beautiful since Soundtracks for the Blind. But Soundtracks for the Blind was all over the place. It was beautiful, but it was also creepy and scary and abrasive and weird. This album, from start to finish, is just fucking soaking in the gorgeousness. The title track of this album, Leaving Meaning. One of the most beautiful so swan songs I have ever heard. That gorgeous touch of piano. It's just it's 10 minutes of just like, ah, uh, chills, gorgeous beauty. And honestly, that beauty, it's pretty consistent from the start to the end of this album. It's just post-rock, experimental rock, gorgeousness. I feel like what really worked well for Swans is in the trilogy of the three albums released before this album, which I mentioned, The Seer, To Be Kind, and The Glowing Man, Swans was just being fucking epic and as, as ambitious and insane as possible, and that was fucking awesome. But here in Leaving Meaning, Swans learns to be just constrain themselves a little bit, just kind of bring it in, just tighten themselves a little bit, bring it down, and let's just be fucking beautiful. We're gonna make beautiful music. We're still gonna be very complex, very intricate. We're still gonna have crescendos that are very epic, but they're gonna be really a lot more subtle crescendos. And it's just, it comes together and it's just so wonderful from start to finish how cohesive this thing is, how it ties together the entirety of Swan's discography, how it has moments of gorgeous chills. So it has moments of eeriness and creepiness, like the lyrics of fucking The Nub, that is a gorgeous song. I love the vocals in that. We're getting fucking gorgeous, gorgeous vocals that are so, mm. 
Then we're also gonna end the album with an especially insane note. We're gonna end the album with The Phantom Limb, which is going to be a track that is just throwing so much shit at you. You just can't fucking keep up with it. After all this be this, this hour and a half album of beauty, it's just gonna peg you with insanity and it's gonna fucking fuck you up so hard. And the lyrics are gonna be about the universe dissolving right before your fucking eyes. It is an insane track to end with. This album has so many beautiful tracks Leaving Meaning, Sunfucker, Phantom Limb, The Nub. There are just so many highlights in this album. It's insane how many, this album is just packed with gorgeous fucking songs. And it's so diverse too. And it's very, it's very typical Swans. It's a very organic, natural Swans album. The way it references all the other elements of Swans that we love so much, it's a fantastic album. I'm giving this a 9.7 out of 10. The only reason I'm not giving it a 10 is because Soundtracks for the Blind is, in my opinion, a better album. So I'm just using the logic that if there's a better Swans album, then it's not a perfect album. But uh, this album, I think, is a little bit more accessible than Soundtracks for the, uh, uh, for the Blind. But I do see this album be becoming a classic that's as essential as the top, the highlight, the greatest Swans albums. This is a fantastic, beautiful record. I see myself going to listen to this a lot in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. Punk Revolution now, 9.7 out of 10.